What do I say now, having the confidence to engage? Having the confidence to engage. A good place to start is with what people bring emotionally. How can we connect with a ministry of presence, being in the here and now, with what someone brings into our church communities? In the middle of my training for ordination, I went and spent two months on a parish placement in a deprived area of Manchester. My supervisor priest had developed a ministry of working with people with mental health issues because of something that had happened at the very beginning of his time in that parish. One evening, there was a knock on the door and a man with mental health condition who had recently been placed in a flat nearby asked if he could talk with him. Rather than talk, he cried for what seemed an age to this priest. It was the early days of care in the community and this man had been placed in a flat with minimal furniture, a knife, a fork and a spoon. He was very lonely and his tears spoke of desperation and deprivation. I wonder how many of us would fare in such impoverished circumstances. The man who was left in that flat with just a few pieces of cutlery was the expert in his world. If we can ask people to show us how they are experiencing their lives, we can grow an engagement around this as a starting place. Mental illness can be described by using the metaphor of the desert. There is poverty in the desert, nothingness, and no one knows how long they will be there or quite when the oasis will appear. When in the desert, we look for the universal language of all who are human, such as suffering and loss, meaning, forgiveness, perseverance, hope and love. In the trust where I am based, the full-time chaplains are generic and they're not faith-specific, which means that we meet of people with different faiths and of none. In the psychiatric hospital, we look for opportunities to make connections with people forming relationships which will hopefully be transformative in some way through helping people to reflect on their inner life by using universal themes. Rowan Williams says this very well at the end of his book, Silence and Honey Cakes. Very, very occasionally around an unexpected corner or with an unexpected person, we catch a glimpse of the fire, the desert filled with flame. If we can listen and hear the universal theme of what someone is saying, we will be meeting the person in a place of discovery rather than imposition. I came across a cartoon recently by John Birch of the Asbo Jesus series, which made me smile. Someone is telling a person, you need more joy in your life. To which the response was, when I can do bearable, I'll work on joy. <laughs> Whenever we travel into the desert and into the mystery of our search for God or what a person may define as God, we will come up against what is described in Ignatian spirituality as the rock. This hard place can shatter us when we fall upon it. It can break us open. But because the desert opens up from time to time, we can experience moments of transcendence or fire as William describes. We are working at the place of transition, often a painful place to be, standing on the threshold of the unknown and the possibility of moving from the barrenness and hostility of the desert to the oasis of the present. Amongst the universal themes of the desert are suffering and lament. Many people with mental health issues suffer and can feel isolated. How can we make the opportunities to show empathy and to find ways of asking how this person is being supported? Do they have friends and family or the support of a community psychiatric nurse or a mental health team? Carl Rogers describes empathy as a healing agent, bringing even the most frightened client into the human race. If a person can be understood, he or she belongs. There is poverty in lamenting alone, 
And so the importance of first hearing the lament of a person's situation before offering anything else. We can underestimate the impact of listening. Patients will often comment how much it matters to be listened to. The theme of the search for meaning. Viktor Frankl, a psychiatrist and a survivor of the Holocaust, who insisted on the necessity of finding meaning if a person is ever to recover from pain and trauma, disturbance, inevitably calls into question the meaning that someone attaches to their experience of being human. The potential for transformation lies in recognising that there is a process to go through and staying with difficulty is not always possible if there is a pressure to identify hope straight away rather than staying with the encounter. The theme of letting go, forgiveness. The ongoing challenge of trying to engage with a process of letting go and building foundations on that which is not seen, namely the inner life. I can think of two women who began the process of being able to forgive, which contributed their recovery through saying the words of the Lord's Prayer. The theme of embracing the paradox, persevering and hope. I have learnt much from working with people with mental health issues. The sheer challenge of what some people are faced to contend with on a day-to-day -day basis sometimes leaves me speechless. If we can approach each situation with what does this person have to teach me about the world and myself, the encounter then becomes one of healing and exchange. In helping people discover the treasure in the field, we may in the process discover it ourselves. Jacob, who wrestles with the angel in Genesis, out of which struggle he forms a new identity and is given a new name, Israel, meaning he struggles with God. Jacob struggled and survived, but for the rest of the life, the rest of his life, he will walk with a limp, illustrating the paradox of new life. A wise priest I know describes embracing the paradox as the pearl around the grit. No grit, no pearl. Finally, the theme of love and the significance of remembering. Christians remember when they break bread together, and this is connected with an act of love. Helping someone to remember love that has been given or received can be transformative. This act of emotional holding helps people to remind them of their identity in the present, restoring humanity and dignity. It also enables people to express gratitude in their lives, no matter how small. Ultimately, the experience of the desert brings a struggle of opportunity and a quest for identity in the here and now. Described very well by Martin Buber as encounter. We are persons because we can say thou to another and because our ego is broken open by encounter with the, our, with the thou of the other. Through that thou of other people, we meet the transcendent thou we call God. Thank you very much.